I'm Kantha Schalke and I'm a food scientist. I work at Corvus Blue and I'm a spokesperson for the Institute of Food Technologists. The common ingredients in pumpkin spice latte are typically cinnamon, cloves or allspice, ginger and nutmeg. What they use in pumpkin spice flavoring are chemicals like cinnamic aldehyde, which represents cinnamon. Those are the top notes of cinnamon. Eugenol for allspice or cloves, terpenes for nutmeg, and vanillin for vanilla. The recipes for pumpkin spice latte is not set in stone. Everyone has their secret recipe. But generally, they're quite similar and there are minor differences that depend on the region, the part of the country, and what people like in those parts of the country. It is possible to make pumpkin spice latte at home with the spices, but it often tends to taste more like Indian masala tea, or what's popularly known as chai. To get the kind of notes and the flavor that's reminiscent of pumpkin pie, you really have to use the flavorings those compounds that come out when a pumpkin pie is baked. Those compounds we don't typically find in the kitchen cupboard. So it's not usually easy to replicate the pumpkin spice latte at home. Commercial pumpkin spice latte uses a flavoring that simply takes the top notes, what are called the character impact compounds, that make pumpkin pie pumpkin pie. Pumpkin spice mix contains about 340 compounds that give it its characteristic taste and aroma. But we don't use all 340 compounds. We just use a few because the human brain can just with 5 or 10 percent of those compounds fill in the blanks and take you to pumpkin spice latte that is very much like the pumpkin pie that you enjoy during the holidays. Each compound that is found in the flavoring has been tested for safety and at levels not just 5 to 10 but sometimes 20 to 50 times the amount that one would normally consume even if they were addicted to pumpkin spice latte and consumed four or five lattes a day. The FDA carefully reviews this document, the body of evidence and ensures that the compound that is going to be used in the flavoring is indeed safe. It's important to know that our world is made up of chemicals, our bodies and everything that we eat. And what matters most is the amount of chemicals that you consume. So even salt and water, which are flame retardants if used in large quantities, and which are absolutely essential for our living, have to be consumed in very moderate quantities. When one smells pumpkin spice latte, one is immediately transported to a different time, to the holidays, because one associates pumpkin pie with holidays, with family gatherings, and with pleasurable times. And that's why they like pumpkin spice latte, and they go looking for pumpkin spice latte to not only help them with the coffee and the caffeine, but to take them back to a good time. And by the way, that's not just for pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin spice, that mix, does it, whether it is in a beer or is it in a cookie or in a cake. It's important to remember that this is mostly for the Western culture because pumpkin pie and the spice mix that is used is more typical of the Western culture than Eastern cultures. Skillfully designed flavorings, such as those found in pumpkin spice, offer you the right notes from the spice mix instead of the whole cornucopia. So for a fraction of a whole tablespoon of the spice mix, you get a flavor that is consistent every time. It's ecologically sustainable because I don't believe there's that, many, that much spice available in the world if every one of us today decided to go out and buy a pumpkin spice something. And it also gives you for a fraction of the cost, the pleasure and the consistency and the flavor that you would have gotten from the actual spice itself.